Welcome back to Louisville Slugger Field. The Bats and the Redbirds in game five of this seven game series here in downtown Louisville. Kevin O'Neill in the studio. I'm Nick Curran in the GE Appliances Press Box here at Louisville Slugger Field. Bats trying to snap the Redbirds franchise best 12 game winning streak. Of course, that Memphis franchise came to be when the Bats, well, when the Cardinals moved their triple, AAA operation out of Louisville and moved it to Memphis when the Memphis team came into existence, became the Redbirds, and now a 12-game winning streak. It started with the final two games of the series here two weeks ago. Continued right through their Norfolk series at home, winning all six against the Tides, and uh, now is continuing on back here a couple of weeks later, the second series in this ballpark between these two teams in the last three weeks. This game up a little bit delayed here at the start. Hunter Green is still loosening down the left field line. So we have another couple of minutes before this one gets underway. Great national anthem. Everyone uh, stopping to take that in. And now Hunter resuming his throwing down the left field line before getting this game started as the countdown clock has uh, just about expired. Just made his final toss. Now he'll walk down to the dugout. One of the great things uh, this Bats team does this year. Haven't really seen it before this year much, but all the pitchers come out and line the way as the starter finishing his bullpen session there pregame walks down, fist bumps, handshakes with all the rest of the pitching staff as he gets ready to take the mound night in and night out. Starting pitcher and starting catcher walk that line with the fist bumps as does Bats pitching coach Seth Etherton. That's getting ready to take the field. It is a warm night, a beautiful night. Sunny skies, not really a cloud in sight. 90 degrees is our game time temperature. That brought to you by DFH Heating and Cooling. Louisville's locally owned and operated heating and cooling experts since 1935. If inside your home is the same as tonight's game time temperature, you'll definitely want to give DFH a call. 502-968-6222. Bats and the Redbirds tonight. They've seen a lot of each other. Four straight week, weeks against the team from the Volunteer State for the Bats. Road in Memphis, home, uh, road rather in Nashville, home against Memphis, back on the road in Nashville, now back home against Memphis. Oh, this quirky schedule. Buddy Bat having some fun with Narciso Crook just before the Bats take the field. everyone getting dialed up and Memphis could have had this 12 game winning streak later in the year they might have been able to take home the prize after the triple a final stretch final 10 games best winning percentage over the final 10 games across all of triple a will win a prize for minor league base for major league baseball that was uh, what was put out and uh, well, the Redbirds if they could have had this stretch during the final stretch maybe it would have been in line for that, but as it is still, now this is almost as incredible as a 12 game winning streak. They're still 15 back in their Southeast division because of how well Durham has played this year. The Bulls have won five straight and they interplay tonight at 47 and 20. That's taking the field right now. Hunter Green and his catcher Rocky Gale the first out and now the rest follows suit as we get set to go here tonight in downtown Louisville. Green maybe uh, his best outing at AAA his last time out Saturday in Nashville. Earned the win, five shutout innings, allowed just two hits. He walked two, struck out nine, one shy of matching his career high. Also threw a wild pitch. Started a four-pitcher combined shutout as the bats won at 12 nothing. Limited the sounds of just three hits that night. Raver San Martin went two innings. Edgar Garcia, scoreless frame, and Tim Adelman closed the door in the ninth with a scoreless outing to lock up the 12-0 Louisville win. Green hoping for a similar performance here tonight back in front of the home fans here at Louisville Slugger Field. 6'5", 230-pound right-hander, the 21-year-old from Los Angeles. 
just 141 professional innings since being drafted number two overall in 2017. Of course, injured late in that 2018 year with Daytona. Didn't pitch all of 2019 with a Tommy John surgery. No minor league season last year. Was at the alt site throughout. Started this year at Double A, had great success at Chattanooga, and earned the promotion to this Louisville team. There's the high Red Sox per usual. Just about ready to go. Friday night crowd still filing in. As the bats and the Redbirds get set. Here we go, Lane Thomas will lead it off for Memphis, the right-handed batting center fielder. 269 on the year with four homers, 19 runs batted in. Has reached base in nine of his last 10 games. One for 11 with two RBIs in the series. Was 0 for 3 last night, walked twice and struck out twice. He digs in from the white, from the right side. Green peers over that red glove. There's the long black sleeves out of the white jersey. He's into his wine. First pitch of the game on the way. It is in for a called strike and off speed pitch from Green. We roll at 7.05 tonight, game number 69 of this Bats baseball season. Green with the 0-1. Thomas takes low. Another off-speed pitch, a ball and a strike. Bats indeed in the all-whites, white pants, the new white jerseys, red LB right chest, red numeral left chest, big red number on the back, red caps, navy bills. Pitch fouled back to the net. That one at 100 on the stadium radar gun, one and two. Memphis gray pants, navy blue jerseys, the two-tone red M logo right chest with the music notes making up the sticks of the M. Same two-tone look on the number on the back with a white outline. Navy caps with the red bills. Here's the one-two. Just missed, maybe a hair outside. Two balls and two strikes. A lot of the crowd wanted that call, but uh, didn't quite get it. It didn't miss by much. 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on and fouled back to the net. That one at 101, and the count holds. Two balls and two strikes. Chris Marco calls the balls and strikes tonight. Clint Vondrak, the crew chief at first. Cody Oaks at third. The umpires brought to you by Dr. Mark Lennon Associates, your official local eye care provider for the Louisville Bats. 2-2. Two -two. Called strike three. Off speed over the inner half. And Green freezes Thomas for out number one. Batting second, the second baseman, number 12, Nolan Morgan. Good start to the night for the bats righty and the one out batter, Nolan Gorman. Left-handed batting second baseman, 224 on the year, four homers, 15 RBIs. Gorman rated the number three prospect for the Cardinals, according to Baseball America, entering the year. Green's fastball down low at 101 for ball one. Gorman, four for 17, three RBIs in the series, had his three-game hitting streak end here yesterday. Green misses in with a fastball at 100, 2-0. and Gorman 0 for 5 with a strikeout in the game last night. Deep breath from Green. Three shifted to the right side of the infield for the bats, the 2-0. Gorman started to on a high fastball at 101, did not offer. Now three balls and a strike, and now on the 3-0 count, Barrero and Schrock switch places. Barrero moves to the left side of the infield in the shortstop spot. Schrock, the third baseman, goes to the right side. The pitch in for a strike, that one at 99, 3-1. Three one, swing and a miss off speed. He got him out in front there, and the count full. Green coming into the night, and it'll be interesting to watch him from here on out. This is as much as he's thrown in a season. Coming in, here's the payoff. That is hit foul down the left side, out of play, and the count holds three and two. Came in at 68 in the third innings, which is time for the most innings pitched, so now he's at 68 and two thirds with that first out, so he's officially thrown more innings than he has in any other year in his professional career. Another 
Bounce foul into the Memphis dugout first base side, and the count holds three and two. And uh, well, when he was three pitches deep in this game, he's thrown more pitches than he had at any point in his pro career this year. Now up over 100, 1140, which had been the high in 2018 with Dayton. Another 3-2. Called strike three, off speed. Gorman had tossed the bat away, was about to take a walk. He's taking exception to that call. Gesturing toward the play. Didn't like that one from Chris Marco. Here comes Ben Johnson down the line, the Memphis manager, to have a conversation with the plate umpire as well. Trying to calm his guy down. Gorman still unhappy as he walks back to the dugout. Back-to-back -back strikeouts looking for Green. And now two outs for Juan Yepes, the first baseman, right-handed batter. 250 on the year, seven homers tied for the team lead, 17 RBIs. Four for 15, a double, a homer in the series. Homered and doubled in a three for five night last night, also struck out twice. Four of his seven home runs on the year have come in this ballpark. There's a swing and a miss on a 101 mile per hour heater, strike one. Rocky Gale catches Hunter Green, Michael DeLeon at first, Alfredo Rodriguez at second, Jose Barrero at short, Max Schrock at third, Braxton Lee at left, TJ Friedel in center, and Narciso Crook in right field tonight for the bats. 0-1 to Yepes. And the breaking ball misses down, one ball and one strike. So Green now at 69 innings on the year, and this is the bad 69th game. And he's thrown more pitches than he has in any year in his career. The 1-1, there's a swing and a fly ball down the left field line. Lee over toward the corner. That is a foul ball. It hooks just foul into the corner. Yepes hooked it just a little bit. Could have been trouble into the corner. But a foul ball on the count of one ball and two strikes. And now Yepes has to go pick up the bat. What a nice year. No question about it for Green in terms of being able to pitch regularly so far throughout the year and not be interrupted by anything. And we'll see how that progresses as this is kind of new territory for him, everything from here on out in terms of pitching in a season as a pro. 1-2 to Yepes. In the dirt, Gale with a block, two balls and two strikes. He's hit triple digits several times here in the first. About to throw his 19th pitch of the inning. And now time called, Yepes backs out. Right back in from the right side. Here's the 2-2. Outside, Yep has started to, but laid off the fastball away at a 101 and the count full. Slight breeze tonight, not much of one. What is here is blowing right to left again across Louisville Slugger Field. Here's the payoff. Swing and a miss. Off speed, Yep has gone on strikes. Green strikes out the side in the first. After a half, the Redbirds nothing, and the bats coming up. This is Bats Baseball on 790 KRD. Bats Baseball brought to you by Miller Lion. It's Miller time. We go to the bottom of the first. No score. Zach Thompson to the mound for Memphis, the left-hander, the Kentucky Wildcat. He gets T.J. Friedel to start the game. Left-handed batting Louisville center fielder. And at 273, five homers time for the team lead. 15 RBIs. First one from Thompson, and it's a strike over the inner half. Friedel's reached base in 10 in a row. He's one for 11 in this series. That was one for two with a couple of walks last night. Reached base three times in four trips to the plate. 0-1, oh, up high. One ball and one strike. For a while, he was the only Louisville player to have reached base in that game as the bats were held 
with the minimum having batted through six. Here's a bond back to the mound, picked up off the front by Thompson, throws the first in time. Friedel got the bunt down, but right back to the mound, and Thompson able to make the play. Friedel retired 1-3 to start the offensive night for the bats. One gone for Jose Barrero. Shortstop, right-handed batter, 306 on the year, tied with Friedel for the team lead with five homers, 18 RBIs. Barrero riding an eight-game hitting streak. He's reached base in 16 straight. Five for 15, a double. A two-run homer in the series. He takes the first pitch down low, ball one. Extended the hitting streak in on base streak late in last night's game. Single to start the ninth inning to keep him going. For Barrero, it's his third streak of eight or more games in a row hitting. He swings and lifts this one in the air down the right field line. Out is the first baseman, Yepes. In is the right fielder, Newt Bar, and that ball lands foul by a couple of feet. A foul ball, and it's one and one on Barrero. He also had a 12-game hitting streak and a nine-game hitting streak, two separate streaks this year with Chattanooga at double-A. Has hit safely in 44 of the 59 games in which he's played this year overall. Very nice run of it for Barrero after an adjustment period after coming up from double-A. Here's the 1-1. Swung on and fouled over the net, onto the roof, down to our right, one and two. Dennis Ortega catches Zach Thompson. Juan Yepes at first. Nolan Gorman at second. Evan Mendoza at short. Kramer Robertson at third. Connor Capel at left. Lane Thomas in center. And Lars Newpar in right field tonight for the Redbirds. Barrero takes in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. Thompson works Sunday against Norfolk for the Redbirds. A no decision. Allowed six runs. Five of them earned on seven hits. Over four and a third innings allowed two home runs in that game. It ended up being a 12-6 Memphis win. 2-2, down and in. Barrero has to lift the legs to stay out of the way, and the count full. It was kind of a slugfest at AutoZone Park Sunday. and Thompson with a no decision. It's his first time pitching above high A, his first full professional season, the 19th overall pick out of UK by the Cardinals in 2019. It's been last year at the alternate site. I was in Springfield, Missouri for the Cardinals, side of their double-A team. There's a swing and a miss on an off-speed pitch down, and Barrero gone on strikes. Two outs in the inning. Here's Max Schrock, left-handed batting third baseman. 291 on the year with three homers, 10 RBI. Schrock one for 11 so far in the series. Over for last night, put the ball in play all four times up. Check swing on the first one and fouls it to the net above the on-deck man, Narciso Crook, third base side, strike one. Schrock playing against his former squad at Memphis. That pitch low and outside, one ball and one strike. Schrock, in fact, debuted in the big leagues last year as a St. Louis Cardinal. 18 and 19, a lot of those years as a Redbird. A lot of time as a Redbird in both seasons. The pitch misses away, two and one. 114 games for Memphis in 18, 85 a couple of years ago in 2019. Originally a 13th round pick of the Nationals in 2015 out of the University of South Carolina. Bounces this one to second, play by the second baseman Gorman, throws the first. In time, and that's a 1 2 3 first turned in by Zach Thompson. We go to the second scoreless. This is Bats Baseball on 790 KRD. We're going to your golf game away from the course at Different Strokes Golf Centers. They feature PGA instruction. Different Strokes Golf Centers, where better golf is the game. Second inning, no score. Hunter Green back to the mound after striking out the side in order in the first. Lars Newtbar leads it off of the Redbirds, the left-handed batting right fielder. 313 on the year, five homers, 17 knocked in. He takes a first pitch fastball a little high at 98, ball one. Newtbar riding a four-game hitting streak. He's four for 12 with a double in this series. One for three with a walk last night. The 1-0, a swing and a fly ball. Hit pretty well to left. Back is Lee, shy of the warning track. He reaches up in the shadow, cutting in from left field. He makes the catch. 
One gone. And now Kramer Robertson, the third baseman, right-handed batter. That shadow starting to creep its way in from the left field corner. And along the left, the uh, third baseline on the infield. Lee at the edge of it between Sunlight and Shadow. Schrock, the third baseman in Shadow. Everyone else solidly in Sunlight. The hitter getting to be in Shadow here with the pitcher in Sunlight. First one inside to Robertson at 100, ball one. Robertson, 257 on the season. Six homers, leads the team with 36 RBIs. Three for 13 with three ribbies in the series. It was one for three with that big two-run single in the second last night. Also walked. He takes a strike, and it's one and one. Here's the pitch. Robertson started two and did not go on a pitch down on the appeal to first. Two balls and a strike. Work continues to come along. They've uh, worked on that tiered berm out there in the right field corner as this series has gone along, getting it ready. Was covered in. Here's a bouncing ball foul, third base side on a heater at 99. Two balls, two strikes. Had been covered in like a, a black covering out there. That's gone. Kind of looks like some uh, sand out there on that berm or what will become the tiered berm. Also in right field, a multi-tiered that pitch low and outside, and the count now full. What will become the Humana Cabana, the roof coming along, that royal blue roof out there. And we're continuing. There's all sorts of ladders out there in right where the Humana Cabana will be. Here's a chop foul, third base side on a fastball at 100. And the count holds at 3-2 and two on Robertson. Looks like well, there's three ladders set up out there, another one down. It looks like they're getting ready for a... Or like a tables, ladders, and chairs match out in right field. Here's the payoff. Called strike three. Off speed and up. Robertson can't believe it. He adamantly disagrees with the plate umpire as he dropped the bat. The conversation continues as he walks back toward the dugout. And again, Ben Johnson coming down the line a little bit. He stops about midway down to make sure his guy gets back to the dugout. Fourth strikeout for Green, the third looking. Two outs for Connor Capel, the left fielder and left-handed batter. First one to him, swing and a tap foul right into the dirt. It bounced up and caught Gale a little bit, so he's all right. Strike one. Capel hitting 260, seven homers tied with Yepes for the team lead, 19 RBIs. Two for nine in this series was 0 for one. Grounded out as a pinch hitter in the eighth a night ago. The 0-1. Swing fly ball, center field, drifting back. The center fielder, Friedel, shaded a bit toward left center. He makes the catch, and that ends the inning. Two perfect frames turned in by Hunter Green. We go to the bottom of the second, no score. This is Bats Baseball on 790 KRD. Bottom of the second, no score. Narciso Crook leads off the inning for the Bats. He takes up and away ball one from Zach Thompson. Crook, the right-handed batting right fielder, 190 on the year with Louisville, four homers, 13 RBI. That's hit in four of five, his reach base in five of six. The 1-0, strike call, off speed, one and one. Crook came off the bench last night, a pinch hitter in the eighth, drew a walk. Two for 10, a double in RBI in the series. 1-1, one, one. that's low and in. Two balls and a strike. Ben Johnson had a pretty amicable conversation with the plate umpire, Chris Marco, there between innings before going back into the dugout from his third base coaching spot. Talking about the strike zone, several, a couple of his guys at least have complained so far. Here's a swing and a high pop-up into short center. It's a shortstop calling for it, Mendoza, and he makes the catch in very short left center field for the first out. Batting fifth, the left fielder. Number 17, Braxton Lee. Here's the newest bat, Braxton Lee, the left-handed batting left fielder. One for four last night in his Louisville debut. Just up from double-A Chattanooga. Hit 212 there in 29 games. Five doubles, 13 RBIs. 27-year-old from Picayune, Mississippi. He takes low, ball one. An Ole Miss product. That's where he played collegially. 1-0, ground ball, 
to short. Mendoza to his right, backhands. Low throw to first, picked out by Yepes on a backhand. Scooped it right out of the dirt. And Lee retired 6-3 for the second out. Here's Alfredo Rodriguez, the second baseman, right-handed batter. 252 on the year with a home run and 19 RBIs. There's the high Red Sox with those white cleats. 0 for 4 with a strikeout last night, 1 for 10 in the series. He takes an off-speed pitch, belt high for a strike. Bats trying to get the lumber going a little bit. Held to just four hits last night. The 0-1, grounded foul up the third baseline. Just kicked foul, nothing in two. They've been held, in fact, to just five runs thus far in this series. They scored uh, one in the series opener Tuesday, none in game one of the doubleheader Wednesday, four in game two, and then blank last night. Rodriguez lifts it foul onto the roof, first base side. Count holds it two strikes, and it kicks up over the break back again. That's after they really finished the Nashville series with a flurry. Scored four in the series finale Sunday, 1-4-2, but had 12 and 11 Saturday and Friday, respectively, in the Music City. Here's the 0-2. Big breaking ball hangs high. One ball and two strikes. They're trying to get back clicking on the offensive side here are the bats. The 1-2. Reaching down, lining one right at the second baseman, Gorman, did Rodriguez, and that ends the inning. Two perfect frames from Zach Thompson to match Hunter Green. We go to the third, scoreless. This is Bats Baseball on 790 KRD. Third inning, no score. Bottom third of the batting order for Memphis. Dennis Ortega, the catcher, leads it off. Right-handed batter takes inside a fastball at 99 from Hunter Green, ball one. Ortega, 148 hitter, a homer, five knocked in, one for three with an RBI and a strikeout in game two of the doubleheader Wednesday is only other action in the series. Takes a strike at 99 on the outside corner. It's one and one. Ortega is hit now in three straight games for the Redbirds. 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss. Got a fastball by him at 100, one and two. That's baseball brought to you in part by Court Furniture. At home, in the office, or on campus, Court can handle all your furniture needs with stylish options, fast delivery, and excellent service. To learn more, visit court.com at court.com. Green with a 1-2 pitch. Hit in the air, foul off the right side. Up over the brick backing on the roof. Out of here, and the count holds at 1-2. and two. That one was at 101. You have a question, comment, whatever you got tonight, you can certainly email us, BatsRadio at BatsBaseball.com. It's the email address here. One, two. Called strike three. Off speed on the outside corner. Perfectly placed pitch by Green. His fifth strike out of the night. And it's the first out of the third. One gone for Evan Mendoza, the shortstop. 270 hitter, seven doubles, 11 knocked in, three for 11 in the series. Was 0 for 4 with a strikeout here last night. First one from Green, and it's a fastball that misses inside. Ball one at 101. At bats Radio at BatsBaseball.com. That is the email address. Inside from Green at 100, 2 and 0. Fireworks follow the game tonight. They follow the game tomorrow night as well. 7 o'clock here tomorrow night between these two teams. There's a strike called at 100, 2 and 1. Righty Michael Marriott slated to go to the hill for the bats. The Memphis starter still to be announced. Our coverage starts at 6.30. It's open at 5.30 tomorrow night. Party at the park. 2-1, inside to Mendoza, off speed and in. Maybe the change up there from Green, and now three balls and a strike. Redbirds looking for their first base runner of the night. Here's the 3-1.
called strike, a fastball at 100 on the outside edge. Mendoza started toward first and now does a lap around the plate umpire as he gets back into position to hit with a count now full. Looks down to his skipper at third, Ben Johnson, who backed all the way to the bat's bullpen plates, home plates. It's the third or fourth time we've seen a Redbird be pretty flustered by a call. Here's the payoff. That is chopped toward second, moving toward the bag. Head high hop of the second baseman, Rodriguez. Fields and throws the first in time. Two outs. Batting ninth. Number 39, Zach Two out batter, Zach Thomas, Thompson, the uh, Memphis pitcher, the left-handed pitcher, also a left-handed batter. Two for eight with a run scored, a triple and three RBIs this year with Memphis at the plate and in his career. That's him as he throws him as mentioned from the left side. The first one to him, a swing and a miss on a fastball elevated at 100. Strike one. Thompson, a native of Selma, Indiana. 23 years of age, which collegiately is mentioned at UK. Takes an off-speed pitch for a strike. Nothing in two. Selma near Muncie, kind of northeastern Indiana. There's called strike three at 101, and that ends the inning. Green perfect the first time through the Memphis batting order. We go to the bottom of the third, no score. This is Bad's Baseball on 790 KRD. Extra large, extra value. Rolling Hills Apartments are proud to partner with the Louisville Bats. Looking for a new place to call home? Stop in today for your personalized tour of their beautiful community. Located just off Westport Road and Hurstbourne Lane in the east end of Louisville, Rolling Hills Apartments. Bottom of the third, no score. Breaking ball misses down and in from Zach Thompson to Michael DeLeon. The switch hitting bats first baseman. Bats right against the lefty Thompson. I think 225 on the year. Four homers. Leads the team with 20 RBIs. The 1 0 chop foul. Third base side into the, well, off the side of the camera well. Far into the Louisville dugout. And it kicks all the way out into left field where Mendoza, the shortstop, out along the line, goes out to pick it up. One ball and one strike. Aileon, 4 for 13 with an RBI in this series. He was 0 for 3 with a strikeout here last night. Thompson with a 1-1. There's a swing and a fly ball. Hit toward left center. Back is Capel, the left fielder on the move. Reaches up just shy of the warning track and makes the catch. One out of the inning. De Leon hit that pretty well, but Capel able to go back and make the play. The one-out batter is Rocky Gale, the catcher. Gale, 188 hitter in 21 games. Three doubles, two RBIs. Has hit in three of his last four starts. One for four with a strikeout here on Tuesday in the series opener. First one to him, and it's outside, ball one. Gale has caught all but one of Hunter Green's AAA starts. A 33-year-old from Portland. Played collegiately at Portland. Pitches high, 2-0. and But uh, they've certainly... That's part of a big part of it, developing that relationship with the pitcher and a lot of consistency with Green having thrown to Gale for the vast majority of his starts. Here's a swing and a foul ball back to the net, two and one. Gale originally a 24th round pick of the Padres back in 2010, made his big league debut back in 2015 as a Padre, played in 11 games with San Diego that year, working his way up through that organization. Split time between double A San Antonio and Triple A El Paso in 16. As there's a liner foul to the netting toward the Memphis bullpen while first base side. Still two and two. Split time between Triple A El Paso and the Padres in 2017. It was three big league games that year. Over to the Dodgers in 2018. Signed as a free agent. Ended up. As that pitch misses down and now the count full. Ortega wanted that call. So did Thompson. They didn't get it. A little bit of chirping now for the Memphis dugout, I think. But the three games of the Dodgers in 2018 for Yale. Split the year between the Rays and the Dodgers in 2019. Here's the pitch. 
Called strike three. Gale started to take a walk, but he's rung up by the plate umpire, Chris Marco. Two outs in the inning, second strikeout for Thompson. Everybody's been unhappy with that strike zone tonight, at least as a hitter. I'm gonna guess the pitchers don't have too much of a problem with it so far. Two out batter is the bats pitcher, Hunter Green. Three for 11 with an RBI at the plate this year with Louisville. That's him as he throws him from the right side. First one from Thompson, a swing and a pop-up foul. Onto the roof, first base side. In fact, over the break packing, it skips up deep onto the roof, and it's nothing in one. Thompson trying to match Green and get through the. Here's the 0 1. Breaking ball drops in for a strike, nothing in two, but trying to get through the order perfect the first time through. Green's done it with seven, I beg your pardon, six strikeouts so far. Here's the 0-2. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. Green got on strikes, and indeed, Thompson as well. Perfect the first time through the batting order. We go to the fourth, still scoreless. This is Bats Baseball on 790 KRD. Bat staff and press box workers enjoy dinner tonight from Culver's. Fantastic as always up here, Culver's. Great selection, burgers, yeah, cheeseburgers. Pretzel bites, fries, cheese cups. Oh my, be sure to stop by Culver's. Check out their flavor of the day. Great desserts, obviously, as well. The concrete mixers, do yourself a favor and stop by. Great stuff as usual here in the press box tonight. We're through three innings, scoreless. Still looking for the first base runner of this game. Top of the order for Memphis, Lane Thomas. Hunter Green's first pitch is in for a strike. Thomas struck out looking in the first. Neither team has had a base runner. No runs, no hits, both sides. 0-1, low and away, one ball and one strike. Kevin O'Neill in the studio. I'm Nick Curran in the GE Appliances press box here at Louisville Slugger Field. It has been a pitching-dominated game so far. 1-1, that's low. Two balls and a strike. Green and Thompson, both perfect the first time through their respective opposing batting orders. Here's a ground ball through the left side into left field, a base hit on a 98 mile per hour fastball. Lane Thomas becomes the first base runner of this game. Second so the leadoff man on for Nolan Gorman. Nolan Gorman. Struck out looking in the first. A lot of movement for the Reds today. In case you missed it, Nick Castellanos hitting the injured list today with a right wrist injury retro to Tuesday. Amir Garrett to the paternity list. With those moves, Vladimir Gutierrez recalled. Never made it to Louisville after being optioned earlier in the week. Bouncing ball up the middle against the shift, and it gets through into center field past the diving Barrero. Charging on to play at Friedel, fires it in quickly. And now back-to-back -back hits to start the fourth for the Redbirds. First Thomas to left, and now Gorman to center. Thomas stopping at second, two on with nobody out for Juan Yepes, who struck out swinging in the first. And that was a good example of Gorman beating the shift. Hit it up the middle, Barrero had ranged around to the first base side of second. If he was in his normal spot, probably wouldn't have been able to get to that ball, but a long way to go from the first base side. And Good piece of hitting there by Gorman to get it through. First one to Yepes, and it's high, ball one. Off speed from Green. But move also, Aleo Lopez recalled from this Louisville team. We kind of suspected last night with him being a late scratch from the lineup, that might be the plan. If Castellanos were to hit the injured list, he did, and Lopez back to Cincinnati. Here's a swing and a high fly ball, deep to left, back is Lee, that ball toward the corner, it is a fair ball and it's a home run. Juan Yepes is homer for the second straight day, it's a three run shot, and in the fourth, he has given the Redbirds a three nothing lead. Only question was fair or foul. It just stayed fair. And Juan Yepes with his eighth homer of the year and now with 20 RBIs. Right fielder, number 11, Lars Lupon.
and that is his fifth homer of his eight in this ballpark, Yepes. First one to Lars Nupar, misses in, ball one. He flied to left in the second. Yepes has loved hitting here. Hit three in the first two games of the series here a couple weeks ago. And Homer's here tonight. Here's a swing and a foul ball onto the roof to our left. 1-1 one, one on Nupar. It rolls off and all the way down below to the lower level. But uh, Yepes having homered tonight after going deep in the first inning last night. It's the fourth inning tonight. Green delivers low, two balls and a strike. That's just the second home run Green has allowed since his AAA debut. He gave up four that night in Omaha, but only two since then. The sixth he's allowed with Louisville, 2-1. That's low, three balls and a strike. And now with a 3-1 count, Schrock shifts around to the right side of the infield, the Louisville third baseman. Ferrero moves a couple of steps toward third, just about midway between second and third, deep on the infield dirt. 3-1, that's low, ball four. And now the first four have reached here in the fourth for Memphis. First walk allowed by Green. Time called, here's Seth Etherton out of the Louisville third base dugout. The bats pitching coach going to the mound to meet with his pitcher and catcher. Gives us a chance to remind you that this copyrighted broadcast is presented by Authority of the Bats and Major League Baseball and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the descriptions or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Bats and Major League Baseball is prohibited. And express written consent from Greg Galliette. Got to have that. Here's Kramer Robertson. He struck out looking in the second. He went down looking. Buddy Bat dazzling the crowd on the first base dugout with hands dance. There's a strike to Robertson. Off speed from Green. You never know what Buddy's going to do next. Throw to first and Newt Barr back standing. Newtbar with one steal and four tries on the year with Memphis. Buddy with fist bumps for a lot of the fans there on the first base dugout runway. 0-1. Robertson takes off speed outside. Slider from Green, one ball and one strike. Newpar being held on by De Leon. Here's the 1-1. Robertson swings and pops it up. Out in front of the plate. Down the line is the first baseman, De Leon. He makes the catch in fair ground and on the grass. One out. Newpar has to hold it first. And the one-out batter is Connor Capel. He flied to center in the second, but uh, mentioned Amir Garrett going on the paternity list. And also, Jose De Leon released today by the Reds. But congratulations to Amir on the birth of his daughter, Koa May Garrett. Born, I believe it was today. Check out a picture on the Reds Twitter account. That would be at Reds. A lot of baby news. We mentioned last night, congratulations to Brantley Bell on the birth of his first child, a baby boy. Brady J. Bell, born 3.33 in the afternoon yesterday, 8 pounds, 4 ounces, 20.25 inches. There's a swing and a foul ball back with Newpar going. Strike one on Capel. Newpar returns to first base. But, uh, Babies being born all across the Reds organization over the last couple of days. Congratulations to Brantley and family. Looking forward to seeing him back with the team. And I'm sure some pictures. And hopefully some advice. Here's the 0-1. That's a little bit high. One ball and one strike.
Green half turnover to first to check the runner. He brings the pitch and it misses just off the plate inside. A fastball at 98, two balls and a strike. Green those high socks. In the long black sleeves as we normally see him wear out of the jersey. Red, white, and blue. Mostly white, but blue and red accents on the cleats. The pitch, swing and a miss. Speed there, and it's two and two. You can see a little bit of uh, perhaps white outer polish, I think, on the nails of Rocky Gale to help delivering the signs to Green tonight. Here's a 2-2. Swing and a foul ball back. Again, Newtbar was in motion on an off-speed pitch. It swung on and fouled back. And again, Newtbar jogs back to first. Still 2-2 two and two on Capel. But uh, interesting news coming out today. And, uh, well, it used to be the, the California League. Now I guess it'll be, what, low A West? Whatever. In that league, Major League Baseball is going to experiment with an electronic means of getting signals from catcher to pitcher. Throw to first and diving back in safely, Newtbar. Hoping it's more efficient instead of having to, they're hoping it can improve pace of play instead of, uh, especially when a runner gets to second base and pitcher and catcher being worried about maybe trying to steal signs from out there and changing them up or having to get together on exactly what the particular set of signals are. Not sure if Gale has any white out on or nail polish tonight. Here's a ground ball past the diving third baseman Schrock and into left field. Lee right there along the line to play it quickly in. Fourth hit of the inning for the Redbirds. Capel aboard. Newtbar stops at second. Two on, one out for Dennis Ortega, who struck out That's looking in the third. Dennis Ortega. But it's interesting. They're going to experiment with it. The catchers will have a wristband that has a bunch of numbers on it. They can enter the number, and it sends the signal to the pitcher, and I believe they can hear something. I think that's the way it was. And it tells them, it signals them the, the pitch type and location. They're hoping it cuts down on any sign stealing, potentially, and of course, maybe speeds up the game, not having to get together on signals. There's an off-speed pitch for a strike to Ortega. And uh, that'll be really interesting to see how that goes. It's going to be an optional thing out of the Cali League, so not don't have to do it. But they're hoping a lot of teams opt into it. Pitch is low, one ball and one strike. Fastball at 99 down. They've sent the uh, equipment out there just to see what that would do. Instead of having to drop the fingers and signal that way, which is the way they've done it obviously forever. Swing and a miss on a fastball elevated at 98, one and two. Seeing if they can signal those things electronically, almost in the vein of a, a coach calling a play to a quarterback or something in football. Like in the NFL. a lot of questions about it, and we'll see how it turns out. Green checks the runners. Here's his one-two. Ortega swings and pops it up foul onto the roof down to our right. Oh, it just missed the roof. Oh, went it right up the walkway. Look out. The walkway in between suites and the new bar area. Young man was able to go back and scoop it up. Rocking a Kentucky shirt. Probably excited to see Zach Thompson pitching tonight for the Redbirds. Kentucky Wildcat. They get in. The one two. Just high. Off speed from Green. Two balls and two strikes. Two on, one out, three runs in on the Yepes homer for Memphis. They have a 3-0 lead. The 2-2, Ortega swings, fly ball down the left field line, racing over Lee on the move on the warning track. He slides, and he makes the catch. What a play by Braxton Lee. 
Went to a slide in the left field corner, disappeared out of our view and hauled it in for the second out of the inning. And not seen him emerge from over there. There he is. Hopefully he's all right. That was a long way to run and then went to a slide to bring it in on the warning track there in the left field corner. What a play for out number two. Then the ball into second. Newpar able to get back. Here's Evan Mendoza, two on, two out. He grounded the second back in the third, 0 for 1 on the night. And now time called. Green steps off the rubber. Mendoza steps out of the box. Now back in. Newpar leads from second. Capel from first. The pitch off the plate outside. A fastball at 99, ball one. Green's next pitch will be his 74th of the night. Four hits in the inning for Memphis and a walk. 1-0. Swing and a miss. Off speed and down. A breaking ball from Green. 1-1. One and one. Newbar walked after the three-run homer from Yepes. And then with one out, Capel single to left. Step off by Green. Out of the box, Mendoza. Gets back in there from the right side. Green looks in, the righty ready, set of the bell. 1-1 one, one pitch. Strike called on the outside corner, 1-2. and two. Trying to get through this frame without any further damage. See if the bats can get things going the second time through against Thompson. One, two. Just missed in. Green thought he may have struck him out. Started to kind of walk off the mound. Didn't get the call, though. And now two balls and two strikes. Righty ready. 2-2. Two -two. Mendoza started to on a slider down and away, but held up in the count full with the pitcher Thompson for Memphis waiting on deck. Here's the payoff. Called strike three, a fastball right there at 100 to end the inning. Seventh strikeout of the night for Green. The Redbirds score three on the Yepes homer. Going to the bottom of the fourth, Memphis three, Louisville nothing on 790 KRD. Bottom of the fourth, three nothing Memphis. Top of the order for the bats, TJ Friedel in to face Zach Thompson. The first pitch breaking ball in for a strike. Friedel tried to bunt his way aboard in the first, but bunted it back to the mound where he was thrown out by Thompson. 0 for 1 on the night, the 0 1. Breaking ball, misses low, one ball and one strike. Thompson, light green, perfect the first time through the order. And now the bats trying to get to him as they begin the second time through. 1 1 pitch, Friedel swings and fouls it back onto the roof just off to our left. One ball and two strikes. Friedel played collegiately in Nevada, member of the Wolf Pack. Against the Kentucky Wildcat, Thompson. 1-2. Hit in the air to left. Moving toward the line, the left fielder, Capel, on a jog. Reaches up and makes the catch toward the corner, just shy of the track. One out. And now Thompson has retired the first 10 to start the night. One out for Jose Barrero. Shortstop struck out swinging in the first. Second straight weekend, the Reds playing the parent club of the team the Bats are playing in the same weekend. The Reds and the Brewers met last weekend while the Bats were in Nashville playing the AAA club of the Brewers, the Sounds. Here's a fly ball, hit pretty well to left center, but quickly over the center fielder, Thomas, a step onto the warning track in front of the LED board in left center. He makes the catch. 
Two down for Max Schrock, who grounded his second back in the first. This weekend, the Reds playing the Cardinals, the big league affiliate of these Redbirds. And right now, the Reds and the Cardinals tied at two. That came top of the third. Paul Goldschmidt is homered for St. Louis. They're going to the bottom of the third, actually, now. The pitch to Schrock, ball one. Joey Votto has doubled home a run for the Reds. 2-2 game in a series Reds would love to get. Fly ball, short into left. In comes Cable, the left fielder, makes the catch. 12 up, 12 down so far tonight for Zach Thompson. We go to the fifth. Memphis three, Louisville nothing. This is Bats Baseball on 790 KRD. Fifth inning, 3 0. Memphis leading Louisville. Zach Thompson, the Redbirds pitcher, leads off the frame against Hunter Green. First pitch and a strike on the outside corner. Thompson struck out looking in the third. Green's next pitch will be his 80th of the night. The 0 1. Strike on the inside edge, nothing in two. He's thrown 106 pitches a couple of times this year, both at double A. The most he's thrown in a game with the bats, 87. That was his last time in there against Nashville on Saturday. Swinging a foul ball back at 97. Count holds at two strikes on Thompson. Check some scores from around the triple A East. Bottom of the fifth in Durham. The Red Hot Bulls trailing the Charlotte Knights, though, 4 nothing in that game. Oh, up and in to Thompson, leans out of the way of a fastball at 97, one and two. Durham enters the night having won five straight. Going to the bottom of the fourth in Trenton, Buffalo the home team, tied with the Syracuse Mets at three. The pitch, called strike three on the outside corner at 98. For the first out of the inning, and that is strikeout number eight on the night for Green. Center fielder number 16. One out to the top of the order in Lane Thomas, who's one for two. He struck out in the first. He singled and scored. Started that three-run rally in the fourth. Or in the top of the fourth in Musick, Scranton Wilkesbury with a 5-2 lead over Rochester. Top of the fourth in Allentown, Lehigh Valley three, Worcester one. Fastball at 99, misses into Thomas, ball one. Top of the fifth inning up in Indianapolis, the Indians one, the Toledo Mudhens nothing. 1-0, strike over the inside corner, off speed there, 1-1. One one. Going to the bottom of the third in Lawrenceville, Gwinnett with a 3-0 lead over the Norfolk Tides. Are in the top of the fourth in Columbus, the Iowa Cubs, a three-run inning to take a 5-2 lead over the Columbus Clippers. Swing and a foul ball back to the net, 1-2 now on Thomas. Bottom of the first in Omaha, the Storm Chasers and the St. Saint Paul Saints are scoreless. Headed to the bottom of the second game, two of a doubleheader in Jacksonville, Nashville with a 2-1 lead over the Jumbo Shrimp. 1-2, low, it kicks a bit away from the catcher, Gale. Nobody on base, 2-2. Two and, two. and a final in game one, Jacksonville scored two in the bottom of the seventh to walk off the sounds, 3-2. Jacksonville defeated Nashville. Circling back, here's a 2-2. Swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back K's to begin the fifth for Green. Now nine strikeouts on the night, matching his triple-A high after striking out nine in Nashville his last time on Saturday. Two outs for Nolan Gorman, one for two. Singled and scored in the fourth after striking out of the first. But to mention Iowa, by the way, has tacked on a num another run. David Bodie with an RBI double. 6-2, the I-Cubs lead the Clippers. First pitch inside, ball one to Gorman. That one at 100. But the uh, the parent club of those Clippers making news today. 1-0. Swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. As uh, the Indians announcing, Cleveland Indians announcing, they will be the Cleveland Guardians starting next year. Uh, Guardian statues and stone Sculptures that sort of watch over the city of Cleveland, named for them. 1-1, round ball to the right side, shuffling to his right. The second baseman, Rodriguez, fields it, flips it on to first, and that's a 1-2-3 fifth turned in by Hunter Green. We head to the bottom of the fifth, still 3-0 Redbirds. This is Bats Baseball on 790 KRD.
Bottom of the fifth inning, 3-0. The Redbirds lead the bat. Zach Thompson back to the hill. Only at 43 pitches through four. First one, and Arciso Crook is a strike. Crook popped a short in the second. Bats still looking for their first base runner in this game. Thompson has retired the first 12 in a row. The Kentucky Wildcat with the 0-1. Crook swings and pops it up foul off the right side and into the seats. Nothing in two. Action in the Louisville bullpen. Righty Matt Pidich starting to throw. As... It would appear Hunter Green's night will be done after five. Bounce back well in the fifth with a 1-2-3 inning, likely to finish his night. Here's the 0-2 to Crook. Swung on and fouled straight back to the net, and the count holds at two strikes. Always great to see the, uh, well, I guess retired, but in my heart always Cardinal Pride Pep Band Director Al Greener. Out here tonight, 0-2. Oh, Big breaking ball hangs high, 1-2. and two. As the bats get set to head to his home state of Iowa next week for six games against the Iowa Cubs. Here's the 1-2. Breaking ball, bounce foul up against the railing of the Redbirds dugout first base side. Still a ball and two strikes. Looking forward to the trip to Des Moines. It'll be a two-week road trip to Des Moines to play the Cubs for six and then on to St. Paul to take on the Saints for six games. One-two. Swing and a miss. Off speed. Crook gone on strikes. First out of the inning. Fourth strikeout for Thompson. 13 straight retired to begin the night. And here's Braxton Lee who grounded a short in the second. That series against the Saints the only remaining AL style series the Bats have left. We talked about this after they played Toledo. In Toledo, there's the first one to Lee up high, ball one. Played the Mud Hens June 8th through the 13th in Toledo. And that, the last American League series till they play St. Paul in a couple of weeks. And then that's the last one on the year. Well, Actually, here's a swing and a foul ball back. One ball and one strike. It's the last one on what was the regular year. With the 10 games they've tacked on, the final stretch, the Bats host Toledo here for five and then go to Columbus for five. So all of those will have a DH. There's a strike, one and two. But uh, a long stretch of pitchers hitting for this Louisville team, and they'll get their one week's reprieve in a couple weeks in St. Paul. A one two in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. Of course, the Saints, the AAA affiliate of the Minnesota Twins, with a shakeup. First trip up that way. Step off by Thompson. He says, My bad. He wants his catcher or take it or roll through the signs again. Lee waits, Thompson the sign, and as he stepped into the line, Lee taking time. We're going to check in some big league scores here. The Reds and the Cardinals still tied at two. That game in the top of the fourth, 2-2. Two -two. And it's grounded back through the middle into center field. Base hit for Lee over toward right center to play it. The center fielder Thomas on it quickly, fires it in, throw got away a bit, but layers to back it up for that Redbirds defense and there is the first Louisville base runner of this game Braxton Lee with the first hit of the night for the bats as well one on one out for Alfredo Rodriguez who lined a second in the second scores from elsewhere around the big leagues bottom of the fourth battle of the beltway in Baltimore the Orioles with a 2-1 lead over the Nationals Going to the bottom of the fourth in Philly. The Phillies and the Braves tied at one. There's a strike to Rodriguez. Bottom of the fourth in Cleveland. The Rays four. The Indians soon to be Guardians three. Bottom of the fourth in New York. The Mets two. Blue Jays nothing. Top of the fourth in Miami. The Padres with a 3-2 lead over the Marlins. Bottom of the third at Fenway. The Yankees won. The Red Sox nothing. Snap throw to first. Quick tag. Lee just got the right hand back to the bag. 
Bottom of the first in Kansas City. The Royals and the Tigers scoreless. Through one in Houston, the Astros and the Rangers scoreless. We're in the bottom of the first in Minnesota. The Angels have a 3-0 lead over the Twins. Bottom of the first in Milwaukee. Central Division leaders battling. Brewers and White Sox scoreless. Fly ball tailing to the right fielder, Newpar, who makes the catch. Two outs, back to first Lee. Two out batter is Michael DeLeon, who flied to left in the third. Still to come at 9.45 tonight, the Giants and Johnny Cueto host Chad Cool and the Pirates. 10-10 in L.A., David Price and the Dodgers welcome the Colorado Rockies. 10-10 in Seattle, it's Yusei Kikuchi and the Mariners welcoming Frankie Montas and the A's. And one final from the day at Wrigley, the Cubs with an 8-3 win over the Arizona Diamondbacks. It's everything around the Triple A East and the big leagues on this Friday. There's a strike to De Leon. He evidently tipped that one foul. Redbirds lead the bats 3-0. We're in the bottom of the fifth here at Louisville Slugger Field. That's with just one hit and base runner so far on the night. De Leon didn't mean to. Went around on that pitch, and it's nothing in two. And they started to talk about it during the last half inning, but the Indians announcing they're changing their name to the Cleveland Guardians starting next year. Tough work on the primary logo there if you check that out. Here's the 0-2. De Leon lines one into left field. Base hit. Played on one bounce by the left fielder, Capel. Lee stops at second. Two on, two out. For the catcher, Rocky Gale, who struck out looking in the third. But uh, whatever you think of the name, that, that primary logo, the winged kind of baseball with the G, not so sure. First one a Gale, breaking ball snaps off well in front of the plate, blocked by Ortega, ball one. Chris Oakey has come out on deck to hit in the pitcher spot. Gale trying to keep this inning going. He represents the tying run with the bats down 3 nothing. Pair of hits, first two base runners of the game for Louisville in this frame, the 1-0. Bounce to a third, played on the charge on the short hop of the third baseman Robertson. He steps on the bag to force Lee, and that ends the inning. Two hits, two men left. We go to the six, still 3 nothing Redbirds. This is Bats Baseball on 790 KRD. Now pitching for the Bats and batting. Changes for the Bats as we move to the sixth inning, 3 nothing Memphis. New pitcher is the right-hander, Matt Pytage. He'll bat eighth. New pitch, oh, the new pitcher is Pytage. As mentioned, he's batting eighth. A new catcher, Chris Oakey, is into the game to catch for the bats. He'll bat ninth. Rocky Gale out of the game. So Pytage on the righty. The 26-year-old from Aberdeen, New Jersey, born on Christmas Day in 1994. On a word. He'll bat eighth. Gail Al, the new catcher, is Oki, batting ninth. Righty on righty here is Juan Yepes leads off the inning. One for two, a three-run homer. The difference in this game is last time in the fourth. First pitch low and outside from Pytich, ball one. Hunter Green, five innings, four hits, three runs earned, walked one, struck out a triple-A career high tying nine. Allowed a homer, 91 pitches, 56 for strikes. Allowed the three runs in the fourth, three straight hits to start the inning, including the three-run homer from this guy to cap at Yepes, swing and a miss there, and it's one and one. But then settled back in and retired the final five batters he faced. Struck out, as mentioned, nine on the night, and Work to one, two, three, fifth, striking out two to finish his night. Now he turns it over to the righty, Pytich. The one-one. Swing and a chop foul left of the plate. One ball and two strikes. Pytich making his second triple-A appearance 
here tonight. He made his debut in game two of the doubleheader Wednesday, two-thirds of an inning, retired the two batters he faced. Pitch just missed off the outside edge, two and two. Pitched in 13 games, made four starts, nine relief appearances at Double A Chattanooga, two and four with an 8-2-0 ERA. Allow 38 hits in 26 in the third innings there. Walked 10, struck out 28. Eighth round pick of the Reds in 2018 out of Pittsburgh. And there's a swing and a miss. Yep, has gone on strikes. Tenth strikeout of the night for Bats pitching. First triple-A strikeout for Matt Pidich. One gone for Lars Newtbar. Has flied out and walked tonight, officially 0 for 1. Righty on left-handed batter. Pidich, a Pitt Panther collegially. Probably a guy that pitched at Jim Patterson Stadium just down the road at some point over the years with Pitt in the ACC. First pitch to Newtbar, swung on, hit in the air to center. Drifting in from playing deep, the center fielder Friedel there, and he makes the catch. Two outs. And the two-out batter is Kramer Robertson. Robertson. Number three, Kramer Robertson. Struck out on the second, popped to first in the fourth. He's 0 for 2. Pitt Panther here versus LSU Tiger. Robertson, as we've talked about, the son of former Baylor women's basketball coach, brand-new LSU women's basketball coach, Kim Mulkey. Righty on righty, and Robertson takes a strike. Mulkey, uh, his mom, was here a couple of weeks ago when the Redbirds were in town with the big AAU basketball tournament in town at the same time. Recruiting opportunity and able to see her son play. Off speed, he started to, but laid off. A ball and a stray. And I believe that was the same night our friend Jason Bond was here as well. One one pitch, low and away to Robertson. Two balls and a strike. And now, his mom will coach hoops at his alma mater. Two one strike from Pidich. Two and two. Pidich trying to make it a quick one, two, three, six. Two, two pitch. Swing and a miss. Robertson chased it down low, and indeed a one, two, three, six turned in by Matt Pidich. We go to the bottom of the six, still three nothing Redbirds. This is Bats Baseball on 790 KRD. Bottom of the six, 3 nothing Memphis. Ball one on Chris Oakey. Came in to catch during the top half of the inning. Leads off the bottom half. Right-handed batter. A Zach Thompson. There's a strike, and it's 1-1. Thompson yielded his first two base runners of the night. Here's the 1-1. Breaking ball hit in the air toward left center field. Over is the center fielder, Thomas, and he makes the catch. The Clemson Tiger Oki retired to the top of the order now, and T.J. Friedel, 0 for 2, Seven out on a bunt over. grounder, and is flying to left. Friedel gets his third shot at Thompson here. First pitch, strike. Thompson in line right now if he can keep it rolling to pick up his first AAA win. Came in 0-6 oh, on the year in his first time at AAA with an ERA of 8-6-7. The 0-1 grounded up the middle, but they're shifted around that way. Behind the bag, the shortstop Mendoza there to throw on to first. Friedel retired 6-3 for the second out, and here's Jose Barrero. Has struck out and flight out. He's 0-2. 
By the way, a note from our friend John Salzman. On this day in 1866, the Cincinnati Baseball Club, the Red Stockings, formed the first professional baseball team. First pitch low, ball one to Barrero. 155 years ago today. 1-0. There's a strike, 1-1. One and one. The oldest squad leading the Cardinals now in the bottom of the fourth in Cincinnati. 3-2, the Red Legs in front. 1-1. One, one. Barrero takes inside. Two balls and a strike. John's full of all sorts of facts. Apparently that was during the Andrew Johnson administration. Indeed. Indeed. Here's the 2-1. There's a line drive into left field. That's going to get down for a hit. Played on a bounce by the left fielder Capel moving toward the line. Rifles one into the cutoff man. Barrero a wide turn. Holds it first. A two-out single for him to run his hitting streak to nine in a row, matching his second longest hitting streak of the year. His on-base streak now to 17 straight. Here's Max Schrock. 0 for 2 has, fly, has a grounded out and fly out. That's trying to rally here with two outs. In danger right now of being shut out for the second straight game and for the third time in the series. Throw to first and Barrero back standing. Let's check some emails. Bats Radio at BatsBaseball.com. Our buddy Jeff emailing in said he had a great time at the ballpark yesterday. Employees were nice. Store was doing brisk business before the game and was out of some things he wanted, but... That'll happen. Little check swing flare into short center. Base hit for Schrock. On to second, Barrero. He stops there. The center fielder, Thomas, throws it in. Back-to-back -back hits with the bats here for two outs. And here's Narciso Crook. 0 for 2 has popped out and struck out. He certainly has the pop to tie this with one swing. But to Jeff said it was a very good experience. Saw people here with both Reds and Cardinals apparel on. He said he bought two T-shirts and one for his brother's birthday, as he said he wanted to do. Thanks for the emails, Jeff, as always. Bats Radio at BatsBaseball.com. Allen emailing in with a couple of thoughts. Wanted to know what the roster change was to allow Braxton Lee to have a spot with the Bats. First pitch up high, ball one. The rosters are bigger at AAA this year. 28 are allowed on the active roster. They're also allowed a five-man, they call it a taxi squad, kind of just an inactive roster. So 33 guys can be here at any given time, and the bats were not at that threshold. So uh, he didn't. there didn't need to be a move for him to join the team, and he was just transferred here. The 1-0 is up high. Two balls and no strikes. Bluffing a throw to first, the catcher Ortega. And so... That's one of the major differences this year. And also said, uh, not a fan of the electronic signals. How much time do signals ever take in trying to steal signals as part of the game for crying out loud? Uh, I tend to agree. It's not going to speed up the game that much. And not sure how well that will go when they try it in the California League. I guess we'll find out. But uh, Alan, very much appreciate the emails, as always. That pitch high, and now it's 3-0. and Bob in Taylorsville emailing us. And... Uh, also talking about the pitcher-catcher electronic signals, he says another ridiculous proposal. When will all the madness stop? Appreciate the email, Bob. If you'd like to, email in batsradio at batsbaseball.com. Righty Cody Whitley starting to throw in the Memphis bullpen. 3-0 to Crook. Strike on the outside corner, 3-1. and one. But uh, the experimental rule, in case you missed it, that they're going to implement in the Cali League. Electronic wristbands on the catcher's arms to allow them to dial up, literally, signals for pitch type and location to the pitchers that will have a corresponding electronic device on the mound. We'll see how that goes. 3-1. Crook takes low. Ball four, and that loads the bases. 
First walk allowed tonight by Zach Thompson. Barrero to third, Schrock to second with Crook at first, loaded with two outs. Here's time call. Dernie Orozco, the Memphis pitching coach, walking out to the mound. Meeting with the entire infield as he just now crosses the line. Whitley trying to get ready. And the bats with their best, their best threat of the night here in the sixth. The Bats Care Program is set up to help those who are less fortunate within our community, giving them the chance to attend a Bats game here at Louisville Slugger Field. The Bats thank this year's partners, Meyer, Pepsi, and Interstate Batteries. Meeting over, Roscoe headed back toward the first base dugout. The batter will be Braxton Lee. One for two, he singled the center his last time of the fifth. He was the first base runner of the game for Louisville. And that was the bat's first hit. Thompson already threw five and two thirds innings. This is already his longest outing of the year. He worked five and a third in a loss against Toledo back on the second of June. First pitch to Lee, and it misses high, ball one. He's only made it five twice, that five and a third inning outing, and then he went exactly five against Gwinnett in his next start on June 9th. And this is just the third time this year he's worked five frames. The 1-0. Strike on the outside corner, one and one. His highest pitch count of the year has been 92. That was his last start on Sunday against Norfolk. He's at 78 pitches right now. He's had a very pitch efficient night. And a jam here trying to work out of it. 1-1 to Lee. Swung on and lifted foul off the left side and well out of play. Kicks up over the brick backing on the roof and now one ball and two strikes. Sun setting, gorgeous off to the west tonight along the river. Deep purple across the way in southern Indiana, fading toward us into a pink and a, a light blue overhead. A beautiful night of the ballpark. Bats trying to break through here in the six, loaded with two outs. One, two to Lee. Swing and a miss, struck him out to end the inning. The Bats leave him loaded. We head to the seventh, still Redbirds three, Bats nothing on 790 KRD. Seventh inning, three nothing. The Redbirds lead the bats. Matt Pidich worked a one, two, three, six with two strikeouts. He's back on for the seventh. I think it's Connor Capel to start it off. Capel one for two, single to left his last time of the fourth. Righty on left-handed batter, and the first pitch is down. Ball one. Activity continues in the Memphis bullpen as Whitley continues to throw. Zach Thompson with his longest outing of the year in terms of innings, having worked through six tonight and six scoreless. The 1-0 just a bit high, two balls and no strikes. If indeed it is the end of the line for Thompson, just the second time this year he's worked uh, an outing without allowing and he runs, went three scoreless in Indianapolis back on the 20th of June. Bouncing ball, foul, first base side, nicely done there. The left-hand pick by the first base coach of the Redbirds, Brandon Allen, the former bat, a bat back in 2016, B.A. The Memphis hitting coach and acts as their first base coach as well. Two on to Capel. That's in for a strike, two and two. The bats bullpen quiet right now. With two strikes, the bats change the shift. Schrock goes to the first base side of second. Three still over there, but Al Barrero, the shortstop, the lone man on the left side. Edge of the dirt, deep, about midway between second and third. Two, two to Capel. Pops it up foul onto the roof down to our left. That one should roll back for a souvenir as they wait for it. Well, 
I guess it's not going to. I thought it would. You never know when it gets up there. Two two pitch. Roll toward second, charging Rodriguez. Gloves throws on the run in time. Capel retired 4 3 to begin the seven. And here's Dennis Ortega. The catcher is struck out and fly to left. It was a great running play on a slide by the left fielder Braxton Lee to retire him his last time up in the fourth. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Well, the. Uh, when they were live, I think they're airing again right now, the opening ceremony of the Olympics earlier this morning. First pitch, a strike on the outer edge to Ortega in front of no fans there in Tokyo. Kind of a bizarre scene. Athletes all coming in, everybody masked and waving to nobody in the crowd there at the stadium. The 0-1 swing and a miss on an off-speed pitch down, nothing in two. Tennis star Naomi Osaka lighting the torch. The game's underway. They'll be different from any Olympics I think ever. A year late and spectatorless, but they're here. I beg your pardon. It is no longer Whitley loosening for Memphis. It is now Grant Black, the right-hander, throwing. So it will be fun, nonetheless, to keep up with how the American squads do in the Olympics over the course of the next couple of weeks. That pitch low to Ortega, one and two. Unfortunately, the U.S. women's soccer team already having gone down. Losing their opener. Here's a grounder foul, first base side, and the count holds one and two on Ortega. I know Jeff emailing back in, BatsRadio at BatsBaseball.com. This is something I wanted to bring up and had forgotten, but uh, he said he sat in section 116 last night. First of all, great seats. And uh, second of all, said the, uh, the gentleman, the usher down there, did a spectacular job of taking care of them all throughout the night. And I uh, wanted to make sure we mentioned that. 1-2, just missed. A fastball off the outside corner, 2-2. Two and two. Three nothing Memphis. We're in the top of the seventh here at Louisville Slugger Field. Game five of a seven-game series between these two teams. 2-2. Two, two. It foul off the right side. Skips up on the roof and over the brick backing. Count holds 2-2. Two and two. Kevin O'Neill back in the studio. I'm Nick Curran in the GE Appliances press box. Bats trying to get on the board, get their first win of this series and trying to snap the Redbirds' 12-game winning streak, a franchise record for Memphis. 2-2, bounce foul, third base side as Ortega continues to hang in at two balls and two strikes. The streak began here. They won the final two games of the series here two weeks ago, swept Norfolk in six at home. And the Redbirds have won the first four of this series. They won last night by the score that's on the scoreboard right now, 3-0. Both teams have four hits tonight. Neither team's committed an error. Another 2-2. Ortega loops one to the right side, back into play it on one hop. The second baseman, Rodriguez, quick throw to first in time. Rodriguez starting to sprint off the field, but that's only the second out. So he slams on the brakes when Pidich says, hey, that's only two. That was so slowly hit. Ortega, Four catcher, seven, seven. not the best runner, but he chopped it so high and so slowly in the air, he was almost able to get down the line, made it a pretty close play. Rodriguez had to hurry to get him. But he does, and there are two outs for Evan Mendoza. Has grounded out and struck out. He's 0 for 2 on the night. And Scott Hurst has come out on deck for the Redbirds with a pitcher spot due next. Mendoza takes low, ball one. And
couple of ground outs here in the inning. The Redbirds, all of their base runners, here's the 1-0, outside 2-0. All of their base runners happen in the fourth. They don't have a, a base runner outside of that three-run fourth inning. Yepes with a three-run homer, also uh, another single and a walk in that inning after the home run. Four total hits in the walk, five base runners in the inning. But uh, they've all been three up, three down frames outside of that for Louisville pitching. 2-0, grounded left side, diving stop. Barrero gets up, throws the first on one hop. In time, what a play by Jose Barrero. Diving stop, one hop throw on to first. De Leon able to pick it, inning over. Stretch time here in downtown Louisville. The Redbirds three and the Bats nothing. This is Bats Baseball on 790 KRD. New pitcher, the right-hander Grant Black, the 26-year-old from Newport, Arkansas, on relief of Zach Thompson. The Kentucky Wildcat, the lefty, a good night. Six scoreless innings, four hits, no runs. Obviously, six scoreless innings. He walked one and struck out five. 80 pitches, 51 for strikes. And now Black on to work. Black will bat eighth. Raider Escanio off the bench to play shortstop, and he will bat in the nine spot. Evan Mendoza out of the game. There's a swing and a miss by Alfredo Rodriguez. Strike one. Righty on righty. Rodriguez 0 for 2 is lined out and flied out in this game. So Black on to pitch. It's a Memphis bullpen that has been really good lately. A 2.05 ERA over the Redbirds' last 15 games. Rodriguez swings, fly ball into center. In a couple of steps, the center fielder Thomas to make the catch. One out. But the bullpen has helped key this 12-game winning streak for Memphis. And now they're into it here. Here's Michael DeLeon. One for two, single to left his last time on the fifth. The switch hitter will bat left against the righty Black. Grant Black, no wins, no losses. This is 11th Memphis appearance, ninth in relief. Uh, an ERA of five. Has allowed 19 hits in 18 innings. Has walked eight and struck out 19. Nick Howard, the righty, now loosening in the bat's bullpen. First one of De Leon, swung on and fouled onto the roof to our left. Strike one. Black working for the first time in this series. The 0-1. Misses in a fastball. One ball and one strike. Black last pitched against Norfolk Sunday in inning. Scoreless. Did not allow a hit. Didn't walk anybody. Struck out one. De Leon swings, fly ball to right, backing the right fielder. Newbar leaps, and it's over his head off the base of the wall. De Leon on his way to second. He stops there, standing with a double. The throw gets through, but rolls to the third baseman, Robertson. De Leon with his seventh double of the year. That's the bat's first extra base hit since game two of the doubleheader. In the seventh inning, a double to lead off that inning by Chris Oakey. They did not have an extra base hit last night and didn't have one until there tonight. And now Jonathan Willems off the bench to hit for the pitcher. Ladies and gentlemen, batting for the pitcher is number 31, Jonathan Willems. Righty on righty here. Black, first two seasons in college at Northwest Mississippi Community College, then transferred to the University of Arkansas, Monticello, back in his home state. Went undrafted out of college. 2018 pitched with the Gateway Grizzlies in the Frontier League, also pitched there in part of 2019. Also time with New Britain in the Atlantic League in 19. Bouncing ball to short. Fielded by Ascanio, looks to second. De Leon back to the back, throws the first just in time to get Willems. De Leon came just far enough off to almost freeze Ascanio enough to allow Willems to get down the line, but not quite. Retired 6-3, two outs for Chris Oakey, who flied to center in the six his first time up. Black signed with the Cardinals on February 1st of 2020. Start of the year at Double-A Springfield this year. A 5-5-1 ERA over 16 and a third innings there. 
and then transfer to this Memphis team on the 6th of June. Righty on righty, first one to Oki, misses low and away, ball one. De Leon with a one out double, the bats have uh, come alive a little bit offensively now over the last few innings, two hits in the fifth but two stranded, two hits in the sixth but left him loaded, and now a one out double here in the seventh. Here's the 1-0. Round ball slowly hits a third. Roberts in charges. Fields fires the first in time. Inning over. One hit, one left. We progress to the eighth. Still 3 0 Memphis. This is Bats Baseball on 790 KRD. Eighth inning, 3 0 Memphis. New pitcher for the Bats, the right hander Nick Howard, 28 year old from Stamford, Connecticut. I think it's Raider Escanio who bats for the first time tonight after entering in the bottom of the seventh to play shortstop. Righty on righty, first pitch swung on, popped up. Oki gives it a look, mask off, back right of the plate. It's into the seats, out of play, look out. A lot of folks were standing to try to catch it. I think that may have hit somebody that was sitting down. I think it hit someone right in the back. Hopefully everyone's all right down there. We may have hit a gentleman or... I can't tell. There's a line drive and a left. That's a base hit. It slams off the wall. Lee picks it up. Ascanio a big turn, but he has to slam on the brakes. Is the second time in the last couple of nights we've seen Braxton Lee play one perfectly off the left field wall as Ascanio tried to knock the wall down with that liner into the left field padding. Hit it so hard he only gets one base. Lead off single to the top of the order in Lane Thomas, who's one for three with a run scored. Singleton scored part of that fourth. He struck out his other two times up tonight. Righty on righty, first one from Howard, low, ball one. The first base runner for Memphis outside of that three-run fourth inning. Howard, the third Louisville pitcher, Matt Pidich, two perfect innings with two strikeouts. And now Howard with his second AAA appearance here tonight. 1-0. Lifted down the right field line. It slices foul into the corner and toward the concourse where the new tiered berm will be. 1-1. One one. Howard pitched in game two with a doubleheader on a Wednesday. An inning, a hit, no runs with a strikeout and what was his first AAA appearance. 22 appearances at double-A with Chattanooga before being promoted. 1-0 with a 2-2-5 ERA. Eight saves and nine tries. This is up with a fastball. Two balls and a strike on Thomas. Howard, a first-round pick of the Reds, 19th overall back in 2014 out of the University of Virginia. 2-1. Swing, high fly ball right field. Drifting in is Crook. He's there. He makes the catch. One out. Holding it first is Ascanio. And here's Nolan Gorman. One for three. He singled and scored in the fourth. Grounded out his last time in the fifth. This series is kind of, uh, well, this night is kind of had an Bit of an ACC feel to it. Righty on left-handed batter. First one of Gorman is in for a strike. Highly touted Cardinals prospect. Played in the Futures game a couple of Sundays ago along with Jose Barrero of the bats and along with his teammate, lefty Matthew Liberator, who pitched in the game for the National League squad. 0-1, up and away, a fastball, one ball and one strike. Single by Ascanio, the fifth hit of the night for the Redbirds. Each team now with five hits, but a three-run Yepes homer, the decisive blow in the game to this point. 1-1 over the head of Oki and onto the backstop. Ascanio to second. Oki back to pick it up. I think the ball got caught under the padding there in the backstop. So Ascanio has to hold it second on the wild pitch.
Line drive, right field, coming on Crooks, rolling out. He makes the catch on a backhand, diving toward the infield. Tough grab by Crook there on kind of an awkward angle. Coming straight in, kind of backhanded it. Great catch for out number two. Let's see. Now reach down, back out. Did he? Well, he got the out. Ben Johnson coming over to the first base umpire to talk about it on the replay. I'd like to see another look at that, but it sure looked like that was trapped. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, I don't think Crook quite brought that in cleanly. Johnson may just be asking if he can get help from the other umpires. Obviously, the first base umpire and crew chief Clint Vondrak had the best look at that. He was the one headed out there, and they're not going to get together here. That's probably what Ben Johnson was asking was for them to get together. Well, that's a break for the bats. Good effort by Crook and evidently a good sales job. So two outs in the inning with Ascanio having to hold it second, and here's Juan Yepes. One for three with that three-run homer in the fourth as Book ended that with strikeouts. Righty on righty. First one. Drops in for a strike off speed on the outside corner. Well, the bats will take any break they can get right now. They're taking on a club that's getting a lot of them. You have to when you win this many games in a row. 12 in a row for the Redbirds. The 0-1 just misses low. One ball and one strike. Franchise record, they had won 11 in a row several years back and set the new franchise record with a win here last night, did Memphis. Swing and a foul ball back to the net. One and two on Yepes. It's also the longest active winning streak in affiliated baseball. Buddy's getting the wave going here. He started it from the first base dugout. The one, two, ground ball up the middle, shift on, but ranging behind second, the second baseman Rodriguez fields it, throws the first in time, inning over. One hit, one man left. We go to the bottom of the eighth, still three nothing Memphis. This is Bats Baseball on 790 KRD. Bottom of the eighth, three nothing Memphis. Grant Black pitched a scoreless seventh inning. He's back on for the eighth. Top of the order for the bats. T.J. Friedel leads it off. 0 for 3 tonight. Righty against left-handed batter. First pitch, and Friedel takes a strike. Hunter Green mentioned the nine strikeouts over five innings. Just the second time he's struck out nine or more in back-to-back -back starts. That pitch low to Friedel, a ball and a strike. His final two starts at double-A before being promoted to the bats. June 4th at Rocket City, 10 Ks. June 11th against Pensacola, 9 Ks. That one bad inning in the fourth, and that's put Memphis in front, 3 nothing. Still there, Friedel swings and fouls it back onto the roof above us, 1-2 and two on a fastball at 94 from Black. That's all the Redbirds have needed right now. They're bidding for back-to-back -back shutouts of the bats. 3-0 win here last night. Would be their third shutout in the last four games. Swing and a miss on a high fastball. Friedel gone on strikes to begin the home eighth. First strikeout for Black. Sixth of the night for Memphis pitching. And here's Jose Barrero. One for three. Strikeout, fly out, single to left his night. He singled his last time up in the sixth.
First pitch swung on, fly ball to center. Having trouble finding it, the center fielder Thomas now does. Straight away center field, he makes the catch. Looks like he had some trouble at first seeing it, but located it. Tough twilight time here. Two outs for Max Schrock. One for three, he singled the center his last time in the sixth. Bats are trying to avoid being shut out in back-to-back -back games for the first time this year. First one is Schrock, righty on left-handed batter, it's in for a strike. Oh, 1 Swung on, hit in the air, down the left field line. It slices off foul into the seats. No balls and two strikes. <laughs> Bats were also not shut out in back-to-back -back games two years ago. So it's been... A pretty good while. Here's the 0-2. Swing and a miss on a pitch down and away, and that's a quick 1-2-3-8 for Grant Black. We go to the ninth, 3-0 Memphis. We go to the ninth inning, 3-0. The Redbirds lead the bats. First pitch to Lars Newtbar from Dowry Moretta. Ground ball into short right. Back to play it. In short right, the second baseman Rodriguez to an E. Gets up, throws to first in time. Nice play by Alfredo Rodriguez. One gone for Kramer Robertson. Cody Whitley back up and throwing in the Memphis bullpen as Kramer Robertson. Comes to bat. Ready on ready. Ball one on Robertson. Sorry about that. Momentarily malfunction with the crowd, Mike. We're back up and running. The 1 0, low. Two balls and no strikes. Robertson 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. Dowry Moretta, the righty, is on for the bats. The 25-year-old Dominican native. Nick Howard, an inning, a hit, no runs with a wild pitch. Moretta, the fourth bats pitcher, making his fifth appearance at AAA. The 2-0, ground ball sharply at the third off of Schrock and kicks into foul ground. And Robertson runs it first on the air. E5. Error charged to Schrock. That was sharply hit. Couldn't tell what it hit off of. Schrock couldn't field it cleanly. And a one-out base runner here for the Redbirds. That'll bring in Connor Capel. One for three on the night. Singled in the fourth. Grounded out to second his last time in the seventh inning. Moretta, ERA of zero over four appearances. No decisions. Has thrown five and two-thirds scoreless innings with the bats. Has allowed five hits. He's walked three and struck out six. Righty on left-handed batter here. First one to Capel outside, ball one. Moretta last worked in game one of the doubleheader Wednesday. Two scoreless innings, allowed a hit, struck out one without a walk. Bats will have three outs with which to work in the bottom of the ninth as righty Cody Whitley back up for the Redbirds, tossing in their bullpen. Looks like he'll be the man on to try to close it out in the bottom of the inning. Here's the 1-0. There's a swing and a high fly ball down the right field line, and it hooks foul to what will become the tiered berm. It settles right in, uh, well, I think it might be kind of a sand right now, and that's, uh, that's buried in the bunker over there. One and one. But the last time the bats were shut out in back-to-back -back games, to go back to 2018, August 12th and 13th of 2018, at home against Lehigh Valley, a 4-0 loss on the 12th, and then at Gwinnett, a 6-0 loss on the 13th of August. Here's a swing and a foul ball onto the roof above us. Still 1-2 and two on Capel. I believe the bats bust to Gwinnett following that 4-0 loss 
to Lehigh Valley. And then shut out their first day in in Gwinnett. That was in the midst of a six game losing streak. One, two. It's down and in with a fastball. Two and two. 95 for Moretta, just missed. And August 12th and 13th of 2018, the last time the bats were shut out in back to back games. first and diving back in safely over there is Robertson. And in danger of being shut out for the third time in the last four games. We'll have to do some more digging to see how long it's been since that's happened. It's a little looper along the third baseline. That ball is a diving effort and not caught by Barrero in the shift. A long way to go. He came flying in from out of nowhere. Couldn't bring it in on a full extension dive, but it was in foul ground, a foul ball, and the count holds at 2-2 two and two on Capel. What an effort by Barrero with a shift on. If there were no shift, that would have been a routine play for the third baseman, Max Schrock, but he shifted around to the right side right now. And it was Barrero racing over. Fully laid out into foul territory. Couldn't quite bring it in. So the count holds it two and two. One on, one out, top of the ninth. Memphis leading three nothing, looking to add on to it. Two, two pitch. Popped up, left side, drifting out into short left Barrero. In comes the left fielder, Lee, and it's Braxton Lee to make the catch. Two outs, back to first is Robertson. And the two out batter is Dennis Ortega. Has struck out, flied out, and grounded out in this game. He's 0 for 3. Righty on righty. First one from Moretta. Ortega swings, sends a fly ball, short into left. Barrero out, Lee in. Barrero couldn't make the over-the-shoulder catch. It lands, Robertson racing around third. Lee's throw to the plate. The tag is not in time. Ball got away from Oki. Robertson safe, and it is 4-0 Memphis. What a heck of a job running the bases there by Kramer Robertson. That's going to be scored an RBI double for Dennis Ortega. It's an unearned run for the Redbirds, and they have a 4-0 lead now in the ninth. Ortega's third double and his sixth RBI. Barrero going out, trying to make that over-the-shoulder grab. We saw him make that play earlier in the series. But that time couldn't haul it in right in front of the incoming left fielder, Lee. Robertson heads up base running. He scored from first on a little bloop and a short left. Running on contact with two outs. Lee picked up that ball and fired it into the plate. Oki swiped the tag, couldn't hang on to the ball. Not sure they'd had him anyway. It would have been close. And now Scott Hurst off the bench to pinch hit in the pitcher spot here for the Redbirds. Looking to add on even more. Righty on left-handed batter. Anything that scores in this inning will be unearned to Moretta. As the bats have three shifted now to the right side of the infield. Hurst 184 on the year. A homer eight knocked in in 41 games. First pitch to him. Swing and a miss. Moretta got a... 
Well, it was just tipped at the plate, I beg your pardon, on a fastball, strike one. Hurst enters the game having hit in three straight. Was one for four with a double and a run scored last night. Also struck out twice. Memphis has added a run to the lead. It's 4-0 here in the ninth. Here's the 0-1. This is down and in with a fastball. One ball and one strike. One ground ball hugging the line and it's foul backhanded in foul territory by the first baseman De Leon. One ball and two strikes. Cardinals have gone in front of the Reds 4-3 that game in the top of the sixth. Cardinals have runners at the corners with nobody out in that inning. Looking to add to their lead. trying to get through this top of the ninth. Righty set to the belt. One, two to Hurst. Fouled off the left side. Onto the roof, it rolls off. This time for a souvenir as the fans wait for it. Going to bring it in over there. Still a ball and two strikes. And that means... If Whitley, as it looks like he will, well, he will after his pinch hit effort, he will come on in a non-save situation. One, two, fastball away, two and two. With the Redbirds having tacked on the run. And it makes the job of the bats offensively a little bit tougher in the home half. Two, two to Hurst. Pops it up, foul onto the roof to our left. And the count holds at two and two. That one rolls off, upper level. And man runs down to pick it up. Six thousand four hundred fifty the crowd tonight. Most of them still here waiting on the post-game fireworks that follow this one. Two two, swing and a miss. Finally put him away with a high fastball. That ends the inning. But the Redbirds add an unearned run. We go to the bottom of the line. Four nothing Memphis. This is Bad's baseball on 790 KRD. Bottom of the ninth, four nothing Memphis. Bats need some magic this evening, and right-hander Cody Whitley is on to try to close it out for Memphis. The 26-year-old from Clayton, North Carolina, he gets Narciso Crook to start it. Righty on righty, first pitch, a fastball high, swung on and missed, strike one. Crook 0 for two, struck out in the fifth, walked his last time in the sixth. Whitley, the third Memphis pitcher. Grant Black, two scoreless innings, a hit, no walks, two strikeouts. Zach Thompson, three outs away for the Redbirds from his first AAA win. There's a swing and a miss. Whitley got the fastball by Crook, nothing in two. Whitley 1-0 with a 1-8-0 ERA. It's his fourth Memphis appearance, five innings, three hits, a run, with a walk and four strikeouts. Time at three different levels this year. Double A Springfield, these Redbirds, and in the big leagues with the Cardinals. Pitch high, one and two. 12 appearances in the bigs. A 6-1-0 ERA with no decisions. Was optioned out of St. Louis 12 days ago to this Memphis team. The time with Springfield was on a rehab assignment. He delivers low to Crook, two and two. Went on the IL May 30th with mid-back spasms and then rehab with Springfield before being optioned to this Memphis club. And Whitley on to try to lock it down here in the bottom of the ninth. The 2-2, two -two, 
Crook swings, pops it up foul, headed toward the roof above us, and the count holds two and two. Whitley pitched in game one of the doubleheader Wednesday. He was the winning pitcher, worked two scoreless innings, allowed two hits, walked one, and struck out one. On in a non-save situation here tonight. 2-2. Two -two. Crook swings and skies one down the right field line. It slices well foul, probably toward the parking lot. Look out. Still two balls and two strikes. Whitley, a 27th round pick of the Cardinals in 2017 out of Mount Olive. They're in North Carolina. Debuted in the 2020 weird season last year on July 26 in the big leagues. Another 2-2, swing and a miss. Breaking ball down, Crook gone on strikes. For the first out. Eighth strikeout of the night for Redbirds pitching. Here's Braxton Lee. One for three, single in the fifth, struck out in the sixth his last time up. Righty on left-handed batter. First one from Whitley and a swing and a miss. Lee was looking fastball, he didn't get one. He got a slow one, he was out in front of it. Strike one. Whitley stands 6'3", 220. Big figure out there on the mound. Here's his 0-1. Swing and a miss. Same pitch there, and it's nothing and two. Trying to make quick work of the bats here in the ninth and send the bats to back-to-back -back shutout losses. O2. Little broken bat flare behind second. That gets through it a center field base hit. Ascanio, the shortstop, went out. It just got past him. Little bobble in center, and Lee gets into second base on a feet first slide. Thomas came on to pick it up, had a little bit of a bobble out there, and that allowed Lee to take second. It's going to be a single and then an error. Lee's second hit of the night. Oh, I beg your pardon. That scored a double. Second baseman. Respectfully disagree with that one. Lee's first Louisville double is sixth of the year overall. He's at second. Here's Alfredo Rodriguez. 0 for 3 on the night. Righty on righty. First one. Rodriguez swings, pops it up. Foul off of first. Over is the first baseman, Yepes. And it's seven or eight rows into the seats out of play. Strike one. The Lee hit, the sixth of the night for the bats, and now each team with six hits. That's trying to break through and at least get on the scoreboard here in the ninth and needing to string a few knocks together to give themselves a chance to overcome this 4-0 deficit. The 0-1, way up high, a fastball, one ball and one strike. One one, low to Rodriguez, two balls and a strike. Crowd into it, trying to urge the bats to a comeback. Again, most have stuck around. Fireworks following the game here tonight, as they will tomorrow night. The two one, fouled back to the net. Swing on a fastball, but Rodriguez fouled it back. Two balls and two strikes. Memphis trying for win number 13 in a row. The longest winning streak in this league this year has been 15. Nashville won 15 in a row earlier this season. Redbirds trying to zero in on that and make it 13 straight tonight. 2-2, Two -two. 
Line drive, a little looper into left, base hit. Lee stops at third. That'll bring the tying run into the on-deck circle as Rodriguez has his first hit of the night. Here's Michael DeLeon. Two for three on the night. He doubled his last time up in the seventh. Double to right field. Switch hitter bats left against the righty Whitley. Ortega out from behind the plate to roll through some signs defensively for Memphis. And now De Leon set to dig in with runners at the corners and one out. Memphis leading 4-0 here in the bottom of the ninth. First one to De Leon. He swings and sends a fly ball into left center over the center fielder Thomas. He makes the catch. Lee tags from third. He scores, and the bats will not be shut out tonight. It is 4-1 Memphis. Sack fly for De Leon, his team leading 21st RBI of the year. But the Redbirds will trade that run for the second out gladly. And now Bo Taylor to pinch hit in the pitcher spot. The pitcher, number 16, Bo Taylor. Rodriguez holding it first. One on, two out, a run in, and here is Taylor. Left-handed hitter to face the righty, Whitley. First pitch, lined and caught to Ania sinking liner. Yepes makes the catch, ball game over. The Redbirds make it 13 straight wins. They defeat the Bats by the final score of 4-1. They've won the first five games of this seven-game series. 4-1 Memphis the final. We'll come back with all the totals in a moment. This is Bats Baseball on 790 KRD.